Hi, welcome to this lecture about ultrasound of amniotic fluid. Amniotic fluid is a watery fluid that surrounds the fetus in the amniotic sac. It is produced by different ways. Early in pregnancy, it is produced by the placenta and surrounding membranes. Later in pregnancy, most of it comes from fetal kidneys and lungs. It is important to note that fetal urine production begins between 8 and 11 weeks, but it does not become a major component of amniotic fluid until the second trimester. This explains why fetuses with lethal renal abnormalities may not manifest severe oligohydramnios until after 18 weeks. Amniotic fluid is absorbed by swallowing, by skin absorption, by GI absorption, and by lung absorption. With skin absorption, it actually requires fetal movements. Amniotic fluid has several roles during pregnancy. It creates a physical space for fetal movement, which is necessary for normal musculoskeletal development. It permits fetal swallowing, which is essential for gastrointestinal tract development, and also fetal breathing which is necessary for lung development. Amniotic fluid protects the fetus from trauma. It maintains temperature around the fetus and even has bacteriostatic properties. Amniotic fluid volume undergoes characteristic changes with gestation. It progressively rises. At 10 weeks of gestation, it is about 10 to 20 milliliters. At 16 weeks of gestation, it is about 250 milliliters. At 33 weeks gestation, it is about 800 milliliters. At 38 to 39 weeks, it reaches a plateau of about 1,000 milliliters. And finally, it decreases at 40 weeks of gestation to about 800 milliliters. Why do we assess amniotic fluid volume? Amniotic fluid volume is routinely assessed during pregnancy because it is a marker of fetal health. Amniotic fluid volume abnormalities may reflect a problem with fluid production or its circulation, such as underlying fetal anomalies. Abnormal amniotic fluid volume has been associated with an increased risk of perinatal mortality and several adverse perinatal outcomes, including premature rupture of membranes, fetal abnormalities, abnormal birth weight, and increased risk of obstetric interventions. There's two important definitions you should know, polyhydramnios and oligohydramnios. Polyhydramnios means that there is increased amniotic fluid volume. And oligohydramnios means that there is decreased amniotic fluid volume. Ultrasound is the modality of choice of assessing amniotic fluid volume. The amniotic fluid volume can be assessed by ultrasound by using three main indirect parameters. A subjective assessment of amniotic fluid volume should be performed at every antenatal ultrasound examination. This method doesn't provide a numerical value that can be used to compare patients and to follow amniotic fluid volume over time. Amniotic fluid index and maximum vertical pocket are the commonly used semi-quantitative techniques. Maximum vertical pocket is also called single deepest pocket. This method is used in singled in pregnancy less than 24 weeks of gestation and in all twins. How to measure maximum vertical pocket? First, find the largest pocket of amniotic fluid. This pocket should be free of cord and fetal parts. Then measure the maximum vertical dimension of this pocket with the ultrasound transducer perpendicular to the floor, as you can see in this image. This amniotic fluid pocket should be at least one centimeter in width. A normal measurement of maximum vertical pocket is between two to eight centimeters. Values above and below this, indicating polyhydramnios and oligohydramnios, respectively. Amniotic fluid index is used in singleton pregnancy, 24 weeks of gestation or more. How to measure amniotic fluid index? In this method, the uterus is divided into four equal quadrants and measuring the deepest vertical pocket of fluid in each quadrant, 
using the same technique as for maximum vertical pocket. Then adding the four measurements together, this will give you the amniotic fluid index value in centimeter. A normal amniotic fluid index measures between 5 to 24 centimeters. Less than 5 centimeters is algohydramnios, and more than 24 centimeters is polyhydramnios. The first step in measuring amniotic fluid index is to divide the uterus into four equal quadrants using two lines, a transverse line passing through the umbilicus and a vertical line passing through the linea nigra. Step 2. Measure the deepest vertical pocket of fluid in each quadrant with the ultrasound transducer perpendicular to the floor, as you can see in this image. Amniotic fluid pockets should be free of cord and fetal parts and measurement should be in centimeter. Last step is to add the four measurements together. The sum of all the four quadrant measurements is the amniotic fluid index. As you can see in this case, the amniotic fluid index is about 12 centimeters, which is within normal values. A normal amniotic fluid index measures between 5 to 24 centimeters. There are some pitfalls you should avoid during amniotic fluid index measurement. The first one is to measure the amniotic fluid pocket that is free of umbilical cord and fetal parts, as you can see in these images. On the image on the right side of the screen, this measurement is incorrect because the pocket contains a loop of the umbilical cord. On the image on the left side of the screen, this measurement is correct because as you can see, the pocket is free of cord and fetal parts. Another pitfall. You should measure the pocket vertically, as you can see on the image on the left side of the screen. On the image on the right side of the screen, the measurement is not straight vertical. This is incorrect measurement and should be avoided. Polyhydramnios is defined as increased amniotic fluid volume relative to gestational age. Before 24 weeks of gestation and in all twins, we measure the maximum vertical pocket. At 24 weeks of gestation and later, we measure amniotic fluid index. Amniotic fluid index more than 24 centimeters or maximum vertical pocket more than 8 centimeters indicates polyhydramnios. Maximum vertical pocket is used to classify polyhydramnios into mild, moderate, and severe. Mild polyhydramnios is between 8 to 11 centimeters. Moderate polyhydramnios is between 12 to 15 centimeters. And severe polyhydramnios is equal or more than 16 centimeters. There are essentially two major causes of polyhydramnios. Number one is reduced fetal swallowing. This can be due to brain abnormalities, gastrointestinal obstruction such as esophageal or duodenal atresia. Compressive pulmonary disorders like pleural effusions or diaphragmatic hernia. And narrow thoracic cage due to skeletal dysplasia. The second cause is increased fetal urination. This occurs in cases of maternal diabetes mellitus and maternal uremia. Hyperdynamic fetal circulation due to fetal anemia, fetal and placental tumors, or twin-to-twin -twin transfusion syndrome. In about 80% of cases, the polyhydramnios is mild, in 15% moderate, and in 5% severe. Most cases of mild polyhydramnios are idiopathic, but most cases with moderate or severe polyhydramnios are due to maternal or fetal disorders. These are two cases of polyhydramnios. As you can see on the case on the right side of the screen, the amniotic fluid index is 36.4 centimeters. And on the other case, the amniotic fluid index is about 30.9 centimeters. A normal amniotic fluid index is between 5 to 24 centimeters. Oligohydramnios is defined as decreased amniotic fluid volume relative to gestational age. 
As previously mentioned, before 24 weeks of gestation, in singleton and in all twins, we measure the maximum vertical pocket. At 24 weeks and later, we measure the amniotic fluid index. Amniotic fluid index less than 5 cm, or maximum vertical pocket less than 2 cm, indicates oligohydramnios. There are essentially three major causes of oligohydramnios. First one is urinary tract anomalies, such as bilateral renal agenesis, multicystic or polycystic kidneys. The second cause is perterm rupture of the membranes. And the third cause is uteroplacental insufficiency. This is a case of oligohydramnios. As you can see on this image, the amniotic fluid index is about 3.7 cm, indicating oligohydramnios. Again, the normal amniotic fluid index is between 5 to 24 cm. The presence of echogenic amniotic fluid on sonography is uncommon, and its clinical significance is not well appreciated. It occurs in about 4% of pregnancy cases. Echogenic amniotic fluid has been attributed to many causes. In the first trimester of pregnancy, it is due to hemorrhage in amniotic fluid. In the second and third trimesters, it is due to meconium, blood, or vernix. Finding meconium in the amniotic fluid raises concerns about fetal well-being. Vernix is a complex fatty substance derived from the disquamated epithelial cells and sebaceous material. More recent studies reported that echogenic amniotic fluid on ultrasound most likely reflects the presence of vernix rather than meconium in 60% to 95% of cases. So, it is recommended that sonographic detection of echogenic amniotic fluid should not be immediately interpreted as meconium. And such a finding warrants immediate non-invasive monitoring to assess fetal well-being. Thank you very much for your attention.